9,290 pounds as you see it here today. An Arctic Wolf 321 bunkhouse, private rear bunk slide, living room super slide, direct entry bathroom, well, bath and a half total, and a massive fridge in a camp kitchen. Tons of fun for a uh, fifth wheel camping family. As always, one of the things we like to show you here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, is the travel access of an RV. Now this is a bath and a half model. So you have an outdoor uh, access directly to the rear half bath, like kind of more dedicated for the bunks, or you could say the guest bath. Um, there is a full bathroom right behind us that you can always very easily access. So bedroom and bathroom access are going to be easy. The half bath you can reach from the outside, not that you really need to for travel when you have a full bath on the inside. The bunk room, you're not going to be able to get to with the slides uh, closed. Because one, you need to open the bunk room slide for it to be functional. Two, this slide is just a little bit too bossy. However, you notice, just like I did right here, they do leave us a nice little walkway where if you want to kind of just cut through here so that you can get to the refrigerator in transit, or you need to like, uh, you know, prepare a little sandwich on the fly for the family, they can huddle around the dinette. I do think it's still travel stop functional. Now, for travel sleepovers, you are going to want to find a place to be able to open up the slides. That's pretty normal in most bunkhouse fifth wheels, though. Another neat thing here is this RV has the juice pack solar option. So, this little uh, monitor that we're looking at right here tells us how much power is in reserve on that battery. Right now, you're seeing 13 volts. That's pretty good. So, that is before, like I clicked a couple lights, but that's before all the lights come on. And when I do this video, I, I take still photos, I do video, it takes me a long time, plus I have to run the slides. So you're going to get to see kind of a before and after stress test to see how well this system is able to keep up with a lot of 12 volt on demand use, because I'm going to light this sucker up like a Christmas tree and run those slides. And when you get it opened up, this one is just tons of family camping fun. It's got enough space where if you're going to be inside on a rainy day, you're not going to trip over one another and drive each other crazy. The taller ceilings versus uh, a travel trailer that will conventionally have this floor plan, uh, a, a very welcome addition. But uh, having that separate private bunk room with that sliding door and the slide back there, it gives the kids like their own room to kind of retreat to. <coughs> It gives everybody the space they need. Now this thing has all kinds of LED accent lighting above like slides in the entertainment center. And it is kind of nice how it all operates on one shared switch. So if you want it on, you got it. You want it off, you got it. This uh, camera doesn't play very nicely with bright sun coming in through the window. So I took the opportunity to really showcase how well those zebra shades work and they're working pretty darn good. And if nothing else, they're really helping keep the heat down in here. Now, uh, as we go through here, one of the uh, first things we encounter is this tri-fold sleeper sofa. You take a look, you see that pops right open, leaves us plenty of room we can walk around it, but it doesn't cut the camper off. So if you're uh, coming from the upper deck bed bath uh, kind of master area down here, you're not going to uh, you know have, have to climb over anybody to get around this kitchen counter that we're standing next to currently to you know get to the kitchen area. Additionally, if you look down below this big seven foot wraparound u dinette, it's about 44 inches deep, by the way, folds down to a big sleeper. You see that this has some full extension big drawers. That's kind of one of those signature calling cards of the Cherokee RV family, of which this is an extended member. Um, you know, you see quite a bit of the Cherokee stuff, like Cherokee Gray Wolf Wolf Pup here at Halet RV, and the Alpha Arctic Wolf uh, family. It's kind of just the laminated division thereof. Um, that tabletop, as well as the countertop or the bathroom counters, any of the tops, I guess you could say in this, they're a sealed edge press membrane, so you don't gotta worry about uh, water seeping in there. So that's another nice thing about this. You've got that separate private bunk room with lots of separate big beds, but you notice how these two things can fold down into big adult size sleepers. So it's great if you have kids or big guests. And the little inclusions of things like the uh, USB plugs between the seats to help keep your phones topped off, very, very handy. I love the hardware on that sliding privacy door, by the way that kind of wrought iron sort of farm barn look. It's really, really trendy right now. As a kid who grew up with a barn in my backyard, it really kind of speaks to me. You see that ceiling fan up top to swirl some air around? We'll come back and get all this opened up. But uh, while we have a good look at it, that is a really cool, you know what? We're just gonna look at the kitchen right now. Why not? We're gonna do it live, guys. We're gonna start right up top, work our way around. We're gonna deviate from the plan, man. And this is definitely one of the areas where this fifth wheel versus 
a travel trailer version of a two-slide bunkhouse like this really kind of shines through. The bath and a half and the extra tall big kitchen space for that extra storage. A trailer just can't match that. As we work our way down here, we have one of those beautiful 10.7 cubic foot, 12 volt compressor driven refrigerator, so it's super travel functional, not to mention more storage than an equivalent square footage uh, gas electric could offer you. Plus this thing has a 5.7 cubic foot fridge outside. This RV has 16.4 cubic foot of combined fridge freezer storage inside and out. That's pretty much best in class, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty, pretty awesome. Another neat thing here, um, the first time I saw it was in the Wolfpack Toy Haulers, another, the, the Toy Hauler member of the Cherokee family, is this dual purpose kind of cutting board backsplash. You see how easy it goes up and down? It's awesome. I love simple, smart, inexpensive, dual function things like that. Now the stove top uh, has the, uh, I, I've got the sink cover on the stove top door right now. That would normally fit right over top of that beautiful black stainless farm sink uh, below the high rise sprayer faucet. And right below that there is space for a little waste basket. There's a nice uh, couple drawers right there for your forks, spoons, and knives. And that pretty much sums up our interior kitchen space. I do like these big fridges though. These were kind of, they really bloomed into the market last year after Wildwood was the first uh, to really kind of standardize that. <laughs> Wouldn't you know, we have Wildwoods here at Halid RV too. Now, I've seen floor plans like this previously from other brands. Usually there's a master bath down here with a tub and a shower and a toilet. But if you notice, this is a half bath only. The master bath with a shower, not a tub, is upstairs, and I love that distinction. This is another area where this really separates itself from a, a travel trailer. Notice too, porcelain foot flush stool. And as we look up top, one of the other things I really like here is that's one of those bigger full-size vent fans. And once you know it, they gave us a remote control. Oops, let me get it into the shot here. <laughs> They gave us a remote control so you can operate that thing from ground level so you don't have to be the Jolly Green Giant to reach it. Now this direct entry half bath does have a deadbolt so you could have the door open for I guess breeze or light if you want but most of the time you're probably going to have that shut and you can keep yourself secure in here. Another thing I kind of thought about, it's unconventional but that's a nice spot for a waste basket right there and it's kind of between the kitchen and the bath. I think that could work. I think that could work. Uh, more sealed edge counter, big sink too. That's another kind of thing from the extension of the Cherokee family. Um, moving back here, sliding privacy door. But you see that little silver jabber? That's a technical term, silver jabber. That's a magnet catch. That's kind of stuff Jayco tends to do on a lot of things that I was very pleasantly surprised. And at this price point, didn't expect to see that. But hey, sometimes, you know, uh, like Bob Ross says, little happy accidents. <laughs> Back here, private slide-out bunk room giving us tons of extra space, which is a very welcome thing. You see that that bunk flips up top here, but if we take a look, if I put everything down in the sleeper position, that 300-pound upper-rated bunk uh, folds down. The bifold sleeper sofa here folds down as well. So we have ourselves daytime living as well as nighttime sleeping. But one more thing, you see all the drawers below that. If we take another look, you see how there's just tons of drawer space below this sofa right here. So you have excellent dresser storage, uh, you know, back here in the guest or kids room. Once again, uh, LED accent lighting and ceiling switch lighting. That is a nice little touch in a bunk room I didn't really, again, expect to see. You don't usually find stuff like that once you leave the living room. And it makes a cool little night light for the kiddos too. So if you do have a little kiddo who's a little bit afraid of the boogeyman, well, they can kind of see where they're going to get to that half bath without waking everybody up. So there's an egress window back there that does open for airflow. Egress means tilt open, by the way. That's a big sliding privacy window right there. And then this over here with yet another breeze window is what I often refer to as a, a big kid bunk. It's a little bit wider. It's about the same length as the bunk in the slide. It's actually slightly longer, but it, a bigger kid can kind of sleep corner to corner on it without worrying about rolling off. See a dedicated ladder here so you don't have to throw the kids into the bed, which is nice. And then like shoe garage, dresser, entertainment space, a little bit of anything and everything you wanted right here. It's got a little bit of anything and all of it. Spinning around as we exit the bunk room here, you see that super slide once again. And with this being on the main level of a tall fifth wheel, it's like six and a half foot tall. Again, something most trailers can't do, so we're not going to be a head knocker in here. A little bit of overhead entertainment storage, and you see yourself right here. If you are so inclined, 
you can throw one heck of an entertainment center in this thing. It's all set. I mean, I've measured it. I mean, you could probably you could put a 40 in there easy, maybe uh, closing in on 50 diagonal up in that space. Pretty handy. Um, there are USB plugs there for entertainment charging purposes. So if you do have like a whole bunch of phones, which everybody and their brother and the kids and have phones and stupid smart USB charging watches and all that stuff, plenty of space to be able to do that. You can turn this into a charging center. Our entertainment system does have an HDMI plug. So if you want to do some high def kind of stuff or plug in a Roku kind of Amazon Fire Stick, you can. Electric space heating fireplace down there giving us some bonus heat without, uh, you know, burning up our propane. And let me back up and just kind of complete the visual here, give us a little uh, look around everything. And I would say as we head upstairs, but before we get there, there's a neat little kind of hidden Easter egg of storage as we go. Although they do a pretty good job making sure it's not hidden because they have a big sticker that says, look inside. Well, guess what we're going to do? Just a handy little tool chest kind of area. Although something I think I would like to see in future models, and I always try to share the good, the bad, with the ugly, and everything in between. What I would, I think, what I would like, and what do you guys think about this? Give me some feedback here. Leave us a comment. Um, I would like it if that didn't flip up, but if the face was just open and I could use it as a shoe garage. I have a penchant for shoe garages because they're very handy. Do you guys like that, or do you like the tool chest? Let me know which way you think. I don't know. I could go either way on it, I guess. Back here, uh, right by the door where we walked in, we got our master control center. Now, you got your awning, your slides, our lights, um, and I do like how, you know, it's like kitchen, living, like everything is listed. It's very simple and easy. But one thing they don't really show you, uh, uh, obviously, is that anything you can do off that panel, you can get the LCI One Control app and sync off your phone, and you can do any of this stuff off your phone, but you don't have to. That's what's nice. It's still physical switches. It's still like I can push the button. I feel good about it. It's not a touch screen. I'm, I'm, weir I'm weird about. Um, the uh, Lippert uh, Wi-Fi hotspot prep right here. Seems like everybody and their brothers coming out with something like this. They all work very similarly. Long story short, it's kind of like a, uh, a range extender that you could put in your house or not technically accurate, but the easiest way to describe it is as a... Um, like a router. You can plug a router in the camper. Now, if you notice, we've got all the lights and everything, and I told you we'd come back and take a look at this. I'm going to take a look, too, before we leave. But it's it's uh, it was at 12.5 volts. It's up to 12.7, and it was flirting with 12.8. So the solar package that's on this basically gives you effectively indefinite use of pretty much any and all of your 12-volt stuff. I will say if I was going to be off-grid and really run in that fridge, I'd probably get a little supplemental panel to go with it. But for most folks, this is going to work great. And it's acting as a battery tender. We don't talk about that a lot in the RV business. But most people don't take care of their batteries properly. This will double to triple the lifespan expectancy of your batteries just because it's helping keep them topped off instead of letting them drain dead. There is a sliding privacy door here as we come up into the bathroom. Nice size vanity, but what was a very cool surprise to me. Huge chunk of cabinet linen space in there. Um, as we uh, work our way over, you see that there are no heat vents around in the floor here. Actually, you, you won't see heat vents in the floor of the Arctic Wolves at all. Now, you see that sunlight shining through the signature there of another of those XL vent fans above this porcelain foot flush toilet. And a 30 by 36 inch shower with a six and a half foot tall ceiling means that this shower is good for uh, taller folks like myself, which is something I greatly appreciate. Um, the uh, bedroom up here, it is compact, but that is by design. That is what's helping keep the RV a little bit shorter, a little bit lighter versus something with a full bed slide. Although we are still getting a 60 by 80 queen. Um, so, you know, true queen bed, normal queen sheets are going to fit that. Some excellent side stands with household and USB plugs. And I like how all the cabinet work around that is all radius, so you're not going to have a sharp corner to jab yourself in. I kind of went back and forth on this. Uh, because it doesn't have a full bed slide, I wasn't sure if I should go ahead and put a second air conditioner on it. As you see, I did. Because it does have that big tall ceilings, living room super slide, bunk room private slide, I kind of thought there's enough cubic foot of space here. I really thought the second air conditioner would be the right decision on this. And once again, leave us a comment. Tell me, did I make the right call here? I'd be really curious to know. Now back here in the corner, you see, this would be your entertainment hookups. But what is a little bit less obvious, if I get here a little bit closer, is how much storage is over here. And this is one of the best things Arctic Wolf does. Instead of a closet slide, instead of a slide over here on the wall, 
that would cause us to lose this breeze window as well as lose a bunch of light, they put all of the storage over here. So instead of a second door to the bathroom that a lot of folks don't seem to care about anymore, they used to, but the market changes, you get this shoe garage and you get this extra closet space without the length, weight, and cost and maintenance of an extra slide out. I am a big fan of this upper deck. Before we step outside, right back where we started, we started with 13 volts. We have, it was down to 12.6, we're back up to 12.9. That's not too bad considering I had every light in this thing all burning at the same time and I've been running slides and fans and all kinds of other stuff. Pretty good. Down below the bedroom and bathroom, we have ourselves a nice, large, open, unobstructed bathroom space here. What is nice is you can see on the upper right-hand corner right now, there's a big, like, almost like an awning light LED strip that'll light this whole thing up. A little more obvious in the evening hours when you don't have the sun pouring in. TV hookups out there as we step back. Uh, in case you're curious, how do you get the TV cables out? Well, that's what this guy is right here, so you don't have to, like, try to pinch them through the bag door and screw stuff up. Little dog leash latch you can use to keep the kids on the campsite or your crazy Uncle Larry if he's having himself a little bit of a spell after the medication goes sideways. Never mind that. Maybe that's more about my life than yours. And this surprised me. This really surprised me. Dual stable steps. I had actually completely already circled around the RV once. And on my pass back through, I had to step up into the bathroom for something and it just occurred to me. Those are not conventional fold-out steps back there. They're the stable steps. Very very rarely do you find dual stable stuff like rockwood does stuff like that but rockwood is like they'll they'll do the most expensive thing sometimes just because it's the most expensive thing now that makes them very cool but this is a very price sensitive brand they're a very weight sensitive brand and that really was like an awesome pleasant surprise i will say though you know they for being a, a budget conscious brand they are excellent about giving this thing some just stellar eye appeal it always has that good curb look about it. Uh, a little accent lights on the nose looking good. You can, you might be able to barely see the uh, second air and the uh, the Furion solar panel kind of peeking up over the roof line there. This runs on a different chassis for most fifth wheels. It's not on an LCI I-beam frame, which is a perfectly good frame. That Montana right there, uh, that Cougar, you know, the uh, Fusion right there, that seismic, they're on that kind of frame. This is on something that's a little different. It's on a very similar frame to what we'd find on our Winnebago RVs here, like the Voyage, actually. Uh, it's Norco chassis. It is lighter weight, and uh, it is it's really strong, which is a nice thing. It's made with a higher grade of steel. That is one of the areas where they did invest a little bit more on this thing. What is also nice uh, is that this RV does have uh, electric auto leveling, and the controller for that's just inside this little pass-through compartment. Well, one of the things I wanted to show you over here, if I get down and take a look, you can see that it does have an enclosed and heated belly. But really, what fifth wheel doesn't nowadays? This is one of those things, guys, where if I don't show you, you assume it doesn't have it, but if I do show you, you go, yeah, of course, right? I don't think I mentioned it, but those baggage doors, uh, they are magnet holdbacks and slam latches, which is nice. Now on the back here, you're seeing two additional options. Like we talked about the juice pack, we talked about the second air already, but that uh, uh, cargo uh, rack on the back there, that folding job, so that you have a place for coolers or a portable generator or something like that, that is an optional thing that we've added onto this. And the roof ladder. That is actually not a normal option. Um, it, it's becoming more common. There's kind of an interesting trend. Uh, when we start talking about stuff at Halo RV and people find out it's available, that ladder used to be a hidden option and suddenly I'm finding it pop up on Arctic Wolves everywhere. I think once customers found out it was available through our videos, they started demanding it from their dealers and wouldn't you know it, it started popping up all over the place. But the ladder, the uh, cargo rack, the roof, uh, second air, uh, which is a 15,000 BTU, by the way. I haven't talked about that. This has a 30,000 BTU cooling system, dual 15K units. Awesome. Big 18-foot power awning with lighting on here. Now, again, dual stable steps. You've got that direct entry bath door with deadbolt for privacy, of course. But this camp kitchen, oh, my lord. I mean, this is, this is pretty awesome right here. So you've got yourself a handy little cabinet. A little spice rack action going on. Individual lights. You've got some little night light action up here. A real sink with a real drain. Some handy outlets. That is GFI protected because I know that's close to a sink. Someone's going to ask about that. Galvanized rolled steel uh, drawer right here. Now they don't build a grill into this because a lot of people are going with black stones or separate grills or griddles or whatever. But there is a gas grill quick connect. So you can get whatever you need or want with this. But 
this big 5.7 cubic foot. This is a fridge and freezer, by the way. Very cool, because again, the inside plus the outside gives us 16.4 cubic foot of total cord cold storage, which, again, I do believe is a best-in-class quality. Not the first rooftop I've been on even today, but a couple things I want to point out. Arctic Wolf uses a, a PVC-based roof membrane, and it's a little lighter, a little brighter, has a little bit better reflectivity, helps keep the RV a little bit cooler, requires a little bit less maintenance. But you've got things like a lot of TPO roofing used out there today, like that Montana. You know what's wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. And that's the thing. I don't get too wrapped up about the roof skin of an RV. Because whether it's TPO, PVC, whatever, at the end of the day, it's what's under the skin that matters. Because you still got to take care of your seals. It doesn't matter what the roof skin is. That seal is the weak point before that roof skin. So I don't care what that is made out of. I care about you folks taking care of that thing. That's why here at Halo RV, we've actually produced videos giving you care, maintenance, routine, suggestions, guidelines, and checklists for that. If you want some of that, drop me a little note. I'll drop your link to it here and, and let you folks, uh, you know, be able to print some of that out and take it home. Very handy for keeping your RV out of the shop. Again, look at the big 15,000 BTU second AC. Now that is a 50 watt raised panel, high efficiency solar unit. Solar's a little tricky this way. Like a Rockwood Geo for a little 19 foot thing. It's got a 100 watt solar panel. And you see that this has a 50 and you're going, well, pfft, 100's better than 50, right? Eh, yeah, no. Here's what I mean. So uh, a flex panel is less efficient than a raised panel like this. Especially when, as solar panels get hot, they lose effectiveness, which is counterintuitive since they're on the roof and designed to be exposed to the sun. So having it elevated where it can aerate underneath and exhaust heat, that's a really big thing. That is a higher efficiency panel you can add a second 50 watt panel to this without having to totally rewire everything. To get more than that, you do need to do some work. Then that little white hockey puck up there, that is a roof attic vent. So the gap between the interior ceiling panel and the roof decking outside, just like in your house, it gets hot. You have to have ventilation there. In a house, you have to. In an RV, you don't have to. And some brands don't. And that right there is one of those things that'll help keep this thing more comfortable in the summertime. And you know, between the dual airs, the brighter reflective skin, the, uh, the attic venting, these do very well in the summer sun. But so do things like Cougars, Montanas, Eagles, you know, Jacos. We got oh, we got all kinds of stuff here, and they all do something that the others don't. They all have a different, specific, unique purpose. Whether it's all those fifth wheels or all those trailers over there, you know, everything has that quality that makes it the best. They're all the best for a different reason. So if you want to figure out which one kind of fits you the best easy all you got to do is go over to halodrv.com give our team a shot we'll help you get matched up with the one that you know help you get your second camper the first time and as always we don't do hidden dealer fees but we do everything else from economy to excitement hitching pieces parts trades finance uh rv delivery and everything in between give us a call we do it all take care stay safe have fun and happy halet camping everyone i'm gonna go get me a nice cold drink but good gravy what a beautiful day look at that